For you, Bob. Well, welcome home to Unity San Diego. We're so glad that you're joining us today online and in person. And this is the last Sunday of February. Isn't that hard to believe? Well, today we also our monthly potluck and our bingo, so I hope you brought something yummy to share and that you're going to be staying with us for the fellowship and the fun afterwards for bingo. And then we'll be finishing at 1, so you'll have plenty of time to get out and enjoy your afternoon on your own afterwards, too. So let's get underway with our wonderful gathering music, and I hope that you'll claim its messages for yourself.
Shanti day with a little bit of love.
I start my day with joy and I feel that sweet release. I start my day with love. I start my day with peace. I start my day with joy and I feel that sweet release. I start my day with love. I start my day with peace. I start my day with joy and I feel that sweet release. I start my day with love. I start my day with peace. I start my day with joy. Starting each and every day with joy, with peace, and with love. What better way to start each and every day, not just Sunday. So welcome here to Unity San Diego and welcome online. I'm Reverend Carla Leitner, part of this fabulous ministerial team that we have here. And just like to welcome you. The weather's getting a little better, isn't it? You can come in, feel a little bit of that sunshine. I got my sunflowers on so I can, you know... A firm sun. Yeah. Well, let's take a moment just to get centered and to breathe in in prayer. And sweet spirit, we're here today to know that there is a new vision for each and every one of us. There is a new vision that raises the consciousness of the world, a vision that we can have within us, that we can express in our own unique, magnificent ways, where we know without a shadow of a doubt that all is well. And today we will delve deeply into that vision, into the steps of how to raise that vibration, into some of the practices we've done, practices we will do. And we know that we are spirit-led and guided by you, God. And so we say thank you, thank you, God, through the power of the living Christ presence. Amen. And now if you'd like to sing, stand and sing Witness. One, two, three, and. <laughs> This day is a witness to my sacred purpose, to all that I'm meant to be. Sing that with me. This day is a witness to my sacred purpose, to all that I'm Letting it in, letting it in, letting it flow, letting it go, where it will go, letting the power of your presence show the way, letting it in, letting you know, I'm letting you lead, that I might follow. This soul is a witness. This soul is a witness to my holy purpose, to all that I'm born to be. Let's sing that again. This soul. Presence, 
standing because we are here to greet each other, love each other, and bear witness that we are here by divine appointment, aren't we? Here's our greeting. We are meant to be here today. Do you believe that? I do. We are meant to be here today. Now, PJ, you are up with announcements. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, for those of you watching online, thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to stay connected, please email us at unitysandiego at gmail.com. Our potluck and bingo <coughs> is today. Uh, enjoy fellowship, food, and fun at 1145 a.m. in Wrigley Hall. Have a delicious lunch and then play a variety of bingo games. Win exciting gifts and prizes. Reusable bingo cards are $10 each. We really hope to see you there. The library is open today at 11.15 a.m. We have a large selection of metaphysical, new thought, and unity books. If you'd like to check out a book or CD, just see our librarian, Bob, in the library after service. Stop in and find a book to delve deeper into Tamara Leaper's Lent class on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Contact Tamara at yogitamraleeper at gmail.com for questions and a Zoom link. Um, so sorry. Okay. Reverend Carla's final Zoom class for spiritual economics will be on Tuesday, March 5th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. There will be no class this coming Tuesday. For more information, email Rev Carla. Uh, Reverend Carla at RevCarlaLeitner at gmail.com. The Soul Sisters will be holding a spring tea planning meeting next Sunday, March 3rd, right after the service. Since there will be voting in Wrigley Hall, they will be meeting on the third floor of the tower. For more information, please email Marty at SoulSistersUSD at gmail.com. The Soul Sisters will be visiting the Japanese Friendship Garden Cherry Blossom Festival on Friday, March 8th. There will be food, vendors, live performances, and more. Carpooling is available. Please RSVP to Marty at soulsistersusd at gmail.com if you plan to attend. Do you have any suggestions, comments, concerns, or praises you'd like to share? Please talk with board member Julie Linville today after the service in Wrigley Hall. Online, you can email unitysandiego at gmail.com and put talk to a board member in the subject line. Unity was founded on prayer, and here at Unity San Diego, we are always praying. In fact, our prayer ministry is growing and changing. You can now call our prayer ministry at 619-282-7609 at any time, 
leave a message, and one of our wonderful prayer chaplains will call you back. You can also email us at our new email address, prayerministryusd at gmail.com. If you'd like to speak to a live person right away, just call Silent Unity, which is available from 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. Pacific time every day of the year, and they can be reached at 816-969-2000. Also, if you fill out a prayer card and would like either a callback or an email, please put your phone number and or email address on the back of the card, and one of our loving chaplains will contact you for prayer. Prayer chaplains are also here to pray with you after the service in front of the choir pews, and today's chaplain is Cindy Coleman. For those watching online, there are prayer chaplains there holding sacred space for each one of you. Now I invite you to listen to our meditation hymn, I'm Here to Remind. time of meditation now to just breathe in to that remembrance to that reminder that reminder that we are magnificent we are worthy we are whole as we breathe into this knowing that all is well I invite you to set aside your worries your thoughts your to-do lists that you might have today. And just step into the silence of knowing that as our prayer for protection says, the light of God does surround each and every one of us. The love of God enfolds us all. The power of God us protect us and that presence of God watches over us no matter where we are because God is in everyone in every place in every person in everything we we'll take the time to know that all is well and as we think of God in all those other places Let's take this time now to remember, to know, and to feel that God is also within us. And as we look at what's going on in the outside, we take this time to bring ourselves into this ever-knowing truth. God is within us. And all is well in the silence.
Just breathe in and release. Knowing that it is in me, it is within me, within each of us, that we find our all, that we fill our God hole that tells us we keep needing more and more and more. We go within, and this is where we come from, our spiritual foundation, found whenever we go into the silence, when we remember who we truly are. And we say, thank you, thank you, God, because we know without a shadow of a doubt that all is truly well. Just breathe again. Release. Open your eyes as you feel moved to do so as we move into the Lord's Prayer. Well, good morning. So I just want to remind you that the choir is coming back for Palm Sunday and for Easter. And if you'd like to sing with us, rehearsals start on March 15th. Come talk to anybody in the music team or talk to me if you're scared of me, which you shouldn't be. But some people are for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, do uh, We would love to have some more people. We'd love to have all of you sing in the choir. Okay, so uh, anyways, come talk to one of us. But for this morning, we have a song called Vision. And best advice in this is like, when you have that vision of yourself being so positive, like I am the best me that I can be, is hang on to that, that. Hang on to the thought that you are strong and you can do no wrong and you are shining bright. So this is vision. And we're all singing it. We each got a solo in this, so it's kind of fun. We're all sharing our vision together. Oh, one, two, three. Stand up, believe in all that you can be. Brother, remember who you are. Be strong, hold tight to that vision, because no one can ever take it away from you. Shine, you got to keep on and, and hold tight to your 
place to be cried. There be moments of loss, moments of winning, a lifetime of love. If I just keep in my mind without any doubt that I Vision. What do you think about vision? What do you think about this title, A New World Vision? What did, you, did you think anything of it? Did you think that we'd be speaking about like parallel worlds or the Anunnaki coming down or aliens contacting us or something different? I'm just joking. They say you teach what you need to learn, and so I suppose this is what I'm teaching because this title brought back a lot of memories for me. Um, when I was a kid, I've told many of you I was raised a Jehovah's Witness. And so a new world vision equaled a new world order where nobody was going to be alive except for Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, because I was told that everybody would live in peace if you were a Jehovah's Witness, if you weren't, God was going to kill you. So I was six years old, I would come home from school, and I would change out of my school clothes, and I'd walk down the street to Jamie Craig's house, and we started digging a hole in the backyard because we were making a shelter for his mom and my dad because my mom would tell me, your dad's not going to, he's, he's going to die. He's going to die. Don't even, you know, don't even worry about it. He's going to die because he doesn't believe. So we were digging a hole at six years old trying to make a shelter for Jamie Craig's mom and my dad so that God would not come and kill them. And it was so much stress, you know, and I didn't realize how much this title was going to bring these terrible memories back to me. Um, you know, and I began to wonder, where is spirit guiding me in this, right? Because I need to move on. But maybe I have a little bit of that childhood terror still in me, just a little bit, you know, a little bit of fear that I needed to release. And although this title brought me these memories, it certainly is not what we're talking about today, is it? Because today I know and I believe without a shadow of a doubt that God is all good. God is love. God is all good. Joy, joy and peace. And there is no way that a God that was love, joy, and peace and everywhere present would hurt anybody, kill anybody, or make them do it my way or the highway. Sometimes when I got older, I used to think that was the way that my mom would make me do what she wanted, you know, my way or the highway. It kind of was that same thinking. But when we think about a vision, when we talk about a world, new world vision, 
what we're really talking about is the possibility for each of us to have this vision of a new positive consciousness, not on another planet, but on this world of upping our consciousness right here on Earth. And each of us can play a part in this, can't we? And it all begins with faith, positive, all-encompassing faith. I really love the words of this poem. It's on my kitchen magnet. I just looked at it the other day, and these words jumped out. It said, faith is looking beyond what is trusting and what will be. It's believing that all things are possible in the midst of impossibilities. Faith is taking small steps, knowing they lead to bigger ones. Faith is saying yes when everything else says no. It's the presence of light in the darkness, the presence of God in all. It's a little magnet with this wonderful poem on it that's so simple, yet it's so profound. It was written by Ellen Cuomo, but it sounds like it could be a unity saying, right? It has such huge words, huge meaning in our life. And we can use the foundation of faith. You know, when we think about the economy, when we're stressed out about the news, when we seem to be inundated with negativity all the time, you know, when we, it's, sometimes it's tough to remember and to have faith, isn't it? When we're living in these dire circumstances. I drove up to sixth grade camp a couple times this week with a friend of mine uh, who was helping me drive to, you know, take luggage for Eliana. And he would tell me, it doesn't matter what we do, we're going to go in the ocean, it doesn't matter where we live, you know, nuclear war is coming. And we talked and talked, but he just kept on. And, and I felt so sorry for him because that's really, really what he believed. And when really what we can count on is not what's out there, but we can count on what's within us, can't we? And what's, what really counts is how we deal with our consciousness. And the Apostle Paul said this really wonderfully in Romans 12, too. He said, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold, but let God remold your mind from within. We can accomplish this by remembering again that God is all in all things. Just like the prayer for protection says, wherever we are, God is. Let me take this, this truth teaching, this truth about the new world vision that we have, and we can put it into action. And so that's really what this new world vision is. It's about action. It reminds me of unity principle number five. It says, I do and give my best by living the truth I know. I make a difference. That means we got to live it, right? We got to do it. So let's take a few moments just to go over what we studied and learned in spiritual economics and then do some steps. So we have this truth. How are we going to live it? What are we going to do? Well, first, we can shift. We need to shift our per perception, don't we? So the first step in our, our vision is to go from lack to limitation to realize that the universe is abundant and that there is everything we need in there. And we, you know, we practice that. Remember we had our glasses a few weeks ago, our substance colored glasses, right? <laughs> that, that helped us see allness in the midst of illness and, and so all sufficiency even, even in lack. We took these glasses and we put them on and we looked to the people that were sitting next to us, didn't we? And we looked and we found a blessing we saw beauty in them, didn't we? And then we practiced how we can find the benefit in ordinary things. We had that treasure tub where we could pull out something, an inanimate object that we didn't know what it was, and we could find that metaphysical meaning. We could find the blessing in it. We could find what it means that it was so much more. And I think what I found was this outlet with a lot of different receptacles in it. And for me, that metaphysically meant that I can be plugged in here or I can change and I can plug there. And if I don't like where I'm plugged in, I can move. I can be in personal, business. I can do as much as I can to look at the blessing. But each and every one of those plugs had a blessing. And then other people came in. Lou came up with a, neck, with a necklace. Some other people came and, 
and little Marcy came and pulled some things, and Dan, and uh, and um, I want to say TT, but I know that's not Destiny. I only remember her her nickname. She came in, you know, some of our our youth came in and actually pulled the metaphysical e meaning and the true meaning of something. And this might look like this was really silly and that was really stupid, but we had fun. But you know, what the heck is Reverend Carla doing? We were actually learning to shift our perceptions. Really. We're actually learning that. So the next we have to do is to cultivate a prosperity consciousness. So we have to believe that we're worthy. That we're worthy to, uh, to receive everything that the God of our understanding wants to give us. Prosperity consciousness, as Eric Butterworth says, is a state of mind, isn't it? It's a state of mind that recognizes our inherent worthiness to receive the abundance of the universe. Do you believe that? To cultivate that consciousness, though, we have to immerse ourselves in prayer, meditation, affirmations. And through this affirmations, prayers, visualization, we can reprogram and sub-program and reprogram our minds to really see things differently, where we can align with the prosperous flow of life. So about 20 years ago, I, I used to smoke a lot. I used to smoke like a chimney. I would not even put out this other cigarette before I'm lighting another cigarette, right? And I was hacking this horrible cough, and I'm like, oh, I got to quit this. So I read this book, and this book said your mind is like a machine. It's like a, a conveyor belt. And if, say it's a conveyor belt of white milk, and you always put white milk in it. So then one time chocolate milk goes in there, and wow. It's freaked out. So you can do this to your mind like a conveyor belt. So what it said was, if you smoke in your cigarette and you say, I'm a non-smoker, I'm a non-smoker, I'm a non-smoker, after 21 days, you will be a non-smoker. So I'm like, yeah, right, okay? Well, didn't I feel real stupid, right, when I was like, I'm a non-smoker, and I was at work going, I'm a non-smoker, I'm a non-smoker. Guess in 21 days, I didn't pick up another cigarette. And you know what? That's been over 20 years yeah, and thank you. And I'm thinking that if I can do this, reprogram my mind with what a book tells me to do and quit that horrible ashtray smelling habit that I had, how much more effective can it be when we add prayer, meditation, affirmations, and God into the equation? It's got to work, right? So... Next is, that works right along with this, is releasing our limiting beliefs. And so we need to, of course, release, and we talk about this all the time, these limiting beliefs that we need to release, that we have about ourselves, that we have about others. We need to get rid of what no longer serves us, don't we? And sometimes we have to keep peeling that onion, peeling that onion, peeling that onion, right? Because look at I was triggered from this talk title. And it brought back a memory that made me, I mean, I was in tears when I first wrote this. And my daughter's like, why are you crying? I'm like, because I was digging a hole to save my dad, you know, so God wouldn't kill him. And she goes, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, you know, that's what my mom told me. And she said, your mom was nuts. I'm like, yeah, probably, you know, but, but you know, I, I, it, I came back. And so what that tells me is that my inner onion Needed a little more peeling, didn't it? So I may think that I'm releasing stuff, that I'm done with it, that I got this, I know I'm worthy, bring it on, God, I'm ready. Then why isn't it happening? What are we doing? Because spirit's flow isn't blocked. Who's the only one that can block it? Me. Me. I'm the only one that can block my own flow. My mother can't block it. You guys can't block it. Kids can't block it. Only I can block my own flow. So I need to liberate myself from these shackles of the past and open myself up to new opportunities, and we all do. And you know what we need to do with that? And I wouldn't ask you to do anything I don't do myself is when we see something that is tripping our trigger, or setting us off, we need to look at it. 
You know, sometimes, and I've done it many times, yeah, yeah, I'll look at that later. You know, eh, well, that's nothing. But is it? And it doesn't mean we want to always continuously work on, I'm like, got to work on myself again. So I've gone in and i got to work on my issues. Because you've got to have fun too, right? So you have to have a reward for your work. And so that reward is to release, to let go, to open up, and to replace our worries and our fears and our thoughts of lack with knowing, that inner knowing of prosperity. It's filling up that God hole, that feeling that gnaws within us that I call our God hole. When I want something, I want it now, and I wanted it yesterday, and I'm just not getting it. I got to go within and fill up my God hole. Because for me, I found that's what I was missing, God. Next step, practice generosity. We know that our prosperity doesn't need to be hoarded. It's our generosity that's really a key component of our abundance consciousness. And so when we thank things, we can do this by thanking what we have. Eric Buttersworth says, don't have onlyness. I only got a dollar. Oh, I only got 50 cents. Well, thank God I have a dollar. Thank God I have 50 cents. Because then it can multiply. But if we're in that Eeyore mentality that, oh, no, it's never enough, then we're going to circulate what we have, what we feel we have, which is nothing, right? I think Reverend Blair used to say, if you feel like you don't have anything, on the way to church, pick a flower and bring it in and give it to somebody because then you're starting that process of giving, that flow. And we give with our time, our talent, our treasure. Um, There's no limits to the abundance that we can have. But we have to be able to not only give, we have to be worthy and feel worthy enough to receive. Because that's what that flow is, that yin, that yang, that everlasting flow of giving and receiving. And we need to walk our talk, which is the last step here, number five. So it's not just about visualizing and affirming and doing all the right things, saying all the right words. It's getting goals and our aspirations and really working on them. It's trusting that divine guidance is really, really working through us. And as we lean back into the arms of the God of our understanding, it's trust. It's faith. It's saying, God, take my will, take my life, and show me how to live. But not just saying that, like, okay, show me how to live. No, wait, we got to listen for an answer, right? Because we have to listen for that still, small voice that lets us know what's ours to do. Because what's mine to do might not be the same as what's yours to do. And then when we do what spirit guides us to do, We are so uniquely magnificent, aren't we? Because we express in these wonderful ways, and then we can raise our consciousness and consciousness of others by living our example, by walking our truth, by sharing our experience, strength, and hope with each other, right? Do you believe you can make a difference? One person. Do you believe one person can make a difference? You think so? Well, I'm going to tell you a story, and it's a story you've probably heard before, but it's a story that always brings back the importance of what one person can do. So you probably heard the, the starfish story by Lauren Isley. And one day a man was walking up down the beach, and he noticed a boy was picking up and gently throwing things into the ocean. So he approached him and he said, young man, what are you doing? He said, I'm throwing starfish back into the ocean. The surf's up, the tide is going out, and if I don't throw them back, they'll die. The man laughed and said, you realize that, like, there's so many starfish here, there's, like, hundreds, and you, there's miles and hundreds of starfish. You can't make any difference. After listening politely, the boy bent over and said, picked up that starfish, threw it into the water, and said to the man, I made a difference to that one. Yeah, he made a difference to that one. So the moral is that everybody can make a difference, right? Everyone can make a difference, even if that difference only affects one person. 
So I'm going to end with an affirmation that's like a poem that we can all say together. It's by uh, author Canon Ferrer, and it's like this. Let's say this together. I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I will do. Yeah, so together, friends, by uplifting our own consciousness, we uplift the consciousness of the people around us, our friends, our family, our community, and into the world. And we can create this new world vision right here, right now, in our lifetime. It's like dominoes, right? If everybody's doing the same thing, they fall all down. But take one out of there, and you're changing the world. And so I invite us to create that new world image today. Let's take a moment to pray. Oh, Mother, Father, God, sweet, sweet spirit. As we listen, as we ask, as we open ourselves up to this divine healing that we get from you, this divine knowing that I do make a difference, that I just need to go within it all begins with me as I live from the inside out, following your word, living life to the fullest, giving and receiving, and allowing you to work through me in wonderfully magnificent ways. We say thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Namaste, friends. Remember, all is truly well. Well, shall we sing a song? Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to stand and sing along with us, you can. I'm going to sing it through once because I think we've only done this once as a hymn, so it's going to be a learning curve for everybody. It goes like this. Yes, I'm going to say yes. I don't know where we're going, but I trust it. Yes, I'm going to say yes. Abundantly, I know that we will manifest. Sing that with me. Yes, I'm going to say yes. I don't know where we're going. I don't know where we're going, but I trust it. Yes, I'm going to say yes. Abundantly, I know. say yes I don't know where we're going but I try to stay yes I'm gonna say yes abundantly I know that we will manifest yes I'm gonna say yes I don't know where we're going but I try to stay say yes abundantly I know that we will manifest abundantly I know that we will manifest are we going to manifest? yes yes, yes. yes with that. an exclamation point so next week we have Angie Keys, who's a certified spiritual educator coming in to uh speak with us. She is also uh, in ministerial school and the Southwest Regional Re Representative for the youth and teens uh, for our region. So uh, Arizona, uh, San, uh, California from Santa Barbara down. She's an excellent speaker. And um, she's going to come in and talk about releasing worry. So I remember the times when I was a certified spiritual educator just speaking and you guys supported me. So I'm hoping and affirming that you will come and support Angie next week as she speaks about releasing worry. So now's our time of giving and receiving. And if you're going to mail in an offering, it is on the address is on the screen. Online, you can also uh, log in at unitysandiego.org and hit our donate button. We're so very, very appreciative for all that you give us. 
We take Visa, we take Venmo, here's my commercial. Um, but you know, it's, so, we're so appreciative because we have a great message to spread, don't we? We have a wonderful message to spread. And we're spending in so many different ways with music, with dance, with <laughs> kids. Yeah. And so let's just take our, our offering in our hands, or if we have it, if not, a little love from our heart will work. And let's say our offering blessing twice out loud and once in the silence. Together, please. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am richly blessed, creating a greater and greater flow. And again, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am richly blessed, creating a greater and greater flow. And then once in the silence of our hearts. Divine Spirit, we are so appreciative of your guidance, of your direction, of how you weave this love and joy into our church here. And we are so grateful for this tithes and love offerings that we are about to receive, knowing that we will put them to use to spread this wonderful message of abundance, of prosperity, and of love. We say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Well, not only did you have the opportunity and the pleasure of hearing Carla speak this morning, but now you get to hear her sing. This is all as well. Anything you want to say about it, Carla? Just a second. Sometimes we might not realize or might not know that really all is well. But as long as spirit is guiding us and we are a divine, all is well. So this music from my friend, Eddie Watkins Jr. says it all. Says it all. Go one, a two, a one, two, three, and. I'm not worried about tomorrow. Today I declare freedom. Wrong key. Am I in the wrong key? That's, that's right Sorry, again. I'm in the wrong key. Start again. <laughs> we can always tomorrow. do all as well again. About tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, there we it. go. You want to sing it higher, which is surprising. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> she got her adrenaline going to go, no, I'm going to sing way higher than that. <laughs> okay. You, you'd be a little scared after you got halfway through it. I going, probably <laughs> would. <laughs> so it's, I am about a one, two, okay. a one, two, three, and. I'm not worried about tomorrow. Today I declare. Freedom from yesterday, mistakes from the past today. Oh, things are made brand new, and don't it feel good to know all is well and unfolding as it should. I can change my reality by changing my mind. Perfect peace, joy, and happiness is yours and it's mine. I am loved and so are you oh, And don't it feel good to know All is well and unfolding as it should Let me hear you say All is well All is well Divine Spirit is directing me right now All is well All is well all is well and unfolding as it should I am cloaked in the spirit I am fed by the divine I am one with all that is My soul is free from mine I am blessed and so are you And don't it feel good to know All is well, don't it feel good
such a fun song. That is a fun song. And so it's unfolding by song. It's unfolding by dance. It's unfolding by words. It's unfolding by spirit. And the it's unfolding by bunny hopping. It is <laughs> bunny hopping up here. And <laughs> so again, I just want to say thank you for your ties, your gifts, your love offerings, for the time and talent and treasure that you give here to us at our spiritual home, Unity San Diego. And thanking God for all that is, all that will be, opening up the channel of prosperity for each and every one of us to have this uprising of consciousness, this spirit rising up and allowing all of us to receive, to live, to show, by lead by example, to have a new world vision. And to pray for all the prayers that you've called in, that you've emailed in, that's in the box, the prayer box, or in your hearts. Knowing that God is good and the highest good. The highest good is what's in store for each and every one of us. And what a blessing that is as divine order leads, guides, and directs us to a new world vision, and we say thank you, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Prayer chaplains again, Cindy is here to pray with you. She'll be right over in the area here. She's hopping on over. <laughs> so let's take a moment and sing More Than Enough by Daniel Neymar. And maybe, may I make one little announcement? Just one way you all can make a difference is to Remember to save a little food from the potluck for those of us on the music team that are going to be rehearsing and for Cindy, who's going to be praying for everyone after service. Thank you. Here we go. There is more than enough in the universe that you created. sacred design. There is more than enough for humanity made in your image. Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I Together, please. The light, light of God, God surrounds us. us. The, the love, love of God, God enfolds us. us. The, the power, power of God, God protects us. us. The, the presence of God, God watches over us. us. Wherever, Wherever we, we are, are God, God is. is. And let's say it together. All, All is well. well. Namaste, friends. Have a great week. And I don't know who the chap, uh, who the board member is. I forgot it's to Julie. change your name, Julie. It isn't. No. It, no. I'm so. Everybody will just have to go in Wrigley Hall, find a board member, and just start talking about how happy you are. It could have been Scott or what? Find a board member. 
We're waiting for you. Talk ya. to somebody. Here we go. Talk to somebody. Come on over. Namaste. everybody. Namaste.